إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد أيها الإخوة الكرام فقد روى الإمام مسلم وأخرج حديثا عن أبي قتادة رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال صيام يوم عرفة صيام يوم عرفة أحتسب على الله أن يكفر السنة التي قبله والسنة التي بعده وصيام يوم عاشوراء أحتسب على الله أن يكفر السنة التي قبله الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم in this authentic hadith he said very clearly that the fasting of the day of Arafah which matched with Monday the coming Monday he said that I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expiate the sins of the previous year and the coming one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wipe out just imagine from your record the sins and all wrongdoings that the person did in the previous year and in the coming year two years and this is for all the small sins the major sins and kabair need a specific tawbah the person to put the niyyah O oh Allah include the major sin in this O oh Allah I ask you for forgiveness from so and so and to specify these sins then this will be included as well and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the same hadith mentioned the day of Ashura the 10th of Muharram which coming later and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expiate the sin of the previous year brothers and sisters in Islam Al-Imam Ahmad rahimahullah he narrated from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu that he said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said inna hadha al-yawm meaning the day of Arafah inna hadha al-yawm man malaka fihi sam'ah وبصره ولسانه غفر له ابن عباس كان يجلس في المسجد على الدعاء والذكر في هذا اليوم يوم عرفة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever whoever in the day of عرفة control his hearing and his sight his eyes لو يرى دقيز doesn't see any haram and his tongue doesn't see any haram Allah will forgive his or her sins. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he used to stay in the mosque during the day of Arafah to have this guarantee. Meaning he used to be in i'tikaf, in reading Quran, dhikr, prayer, and dua. وفي حديث عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت أن الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم said ما من يوم أكثر من أن يعتق الله فيه عبدا من النار من يوم عرفة وإنه ليدنو ثم يباهي بهم الملائكة فيقول ما أراد هؤلاء In this narration the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said there is no day on which Allah سبحانه وتعالى ransoms more of his servants than from the hellfire than the day of Arafah. Allah free people from the hellfire. Allah give them al-itq min al-nar. Allah give them guaranteed position in paradise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to the malaika, what they want? They gather in Arafah. What they want? They fast in Arafah. What they want? I give them all their wishes. I fulfill all their needs. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is golden opportunity for us. Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu narrated this hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said خير الدعاء دعاء يوم عرفة وخير ما قلت أنا والنبيين من قبلي 
لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير في رواية يحيي ويميت رواه الترمذي أن إن ذس حديث أفضل الدعاء دعاء يوم عرفه في رواية طلحة بن عبيد الله and this is Mursal and the meaning أفضل الدعاء the meaning that it is the most accepted and the most blessed dua the most blessed dua the dua that has baraka وأعظم ثوابا and it has more reward by doing this dua because it's sunnah to make it you are following the sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم وأقربه إجابة and it is more accepted so the day of Arafah is very important day Indeed, it is the greatest day in the whole year. And this day, the day of Arafah, ويوم النحر, the day of Eid, the day of Eid al-Adha, or Eid al-Nahr. Adha means Adhiya, Urbani, the sacrifice. Huh? And al-Nahr, because this is referring to فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَى إِنَّا أَعْطَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرُ والله is a great blessing from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah bless this ummah with the kawthar, the river, the hawd al-kawthar in paradise We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather all of us with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to give us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by his own hands the water from the river of al-kawthar the water that if you get once you will never feel thirsty at all after that So just imagine this joy you are getting it from the Prophet Sallallahu himself. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala أن يكون أن أن يجعلنا متبعين لا مبتدعين. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to make us among those people who follow the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his sunnah. So we can gain this great honor and great blessing on the day of Qiyamah. يوم عرفة ويوم النحر. The day of عرفة and the day of Eid. وأيام التشريق. And the three days after Eid, the days of Tashriq, people do Qurbani, the Adahi on these days. And the Hujjaj are in Mina, they are staying in Mina. Eiduna Ahlul Islam, these are days of Eid. Days of Eid. So, Eid means here a special day. So, Arafah is a special day for us, we fast. For Hujjaj, they don't fast, but they are in a great position. On the day of Arafah. And on the day of Eid for us, we do the prayer and the dua, and Allah accept that Yomul Jaiza, and we do the Qurbani, and the Hujjaj they do their work and the Sha'air of Hajj, the Qawaf and Sa'i, and the Qurbani, and the Halq, and all this. And subhanallah, the day of Eid it's haram to fast. Haram to fast. And three days after Eid also haram to fast. So if somebody wants to fast, the fast, the nafiq is going to be after that. Ayyamu Eid. Eidun Ahlul Islam. Wahya Ayyamu Akil wa Shur. And these days to eat, to drink from the halal, and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help and for blessing and for barakah. And these days, another narration, Ayyamu Akil wa Shur. Wa dhikrun lillah. Wa dhikrun lillah. أيام التشريق أيام أكل وشرب وذكر لله عز وجل. and actually these days from the beginning of the hijja we have the takbir, ها we have the ذكر as the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said فأكثر منهن التحميد والتهليل والتكبير. to say الله أكبر to say الحمد لله to say لا إله إلا الله and there are many ways to say. so if you are in your way coming to the masjid, if you are going home, if you are driving. If you are if you are in the in the city, any time, this is what they call it a dhikr and mutlaq. You can make any type of dhikr, any type of tasbih, any type of tahleel, any type of tahmeed. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillah Alham. This is one way. And on the day of Arafah and the day of Eid. And Ayyam al-Tashriq, we do this takbir after the prayers. We do the takbir after the prayers, and that is al-takbir al-muqayyad. Al-muqayyad, specific times for it, after you finish the prayer. It's very important that we should 
get this opportunity, we should not make any wastage of resources or israf, and we should eat what we need, not what we want, and we should use these days uh, to invite others, help others. There are many people around us in the community without families, single, single mothers, maybe some families they can, some sisters can invite them. There are single brothers, they can be invited as well. Huh? So it's very important for us to accommodate each other, help each other. Not every time we just invite same friends, same relatives and Eid, and then we just feel the Eid and others they don't. So we need to make everyone feel the Eid. In the masjid, you can bring with you something, give it to others. A brother, I see you always in the masjid, I don't even know your name, but I really like to invite you for Eid. Inshallah, Eid dinner, please come with us. We love you for the sake of Allah. We we'll see you in the masjid. That's our relation. Our connection is La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. We are the Muslim Ummah. It doesn't matter where you are from. Because sometimes people invite only their own country, their own relative, their own community. And this is what I see always. It's good to have link with your own community as well. But at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us Ummah, made us nation that mixed nation. So we need to spread the good. We need to spread, inshallah, the khair. So we invite those one among us who will feel left out on the day of Eid. And you Muslims, imagine in you Muslims how much difficult they find it. And it's challenging. When maybe they don't have families, maybe they, their family left them because they became Muslim. Some of them. Or they struggle and they feel after a prayer Eid, Khalas, that's it. Eid done for them. They don't feel the Eid. But if we invite them, we include them, that will bring, inshallah, the love and care and barakah and rahmah for our community. Brothers, we need to have the tarahum. Sadaqah, donate as much as you can. Visit each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do the qurbani for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, do the qurbani. If you can do it here, you eat from it and your family keep from it. Give hadiyya. Uh, Insha'Allah, give especially the students, those one who are here without families, let them feel the Eid by receiving some of your Qurbani meat. Insha'Allah, you can do that. There are many of them here. And brothers, Insha'Allah, you can do donate outside and in different locations back home where are needies and where are people who are desperately really wait, waiting for the meat. They just eat meat in the Eid time. They don't eat for the whole year. There are some people really in, in remote villages, that's their situation and conditions. So for us, we need to give them love and care and give them. And you say, okay, this Qurbani, the niyyah is, this is Qurbani, udhiya for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sacrifice it as sadaqah for the faqir. So you can look at your situation. If you have children, make one here so your children can feel the Eid. They can touch the barakah of Eid. Because the Prophet said, eat from it, keep from it, and give from it hadiyah and give sadaqah. Kulu, ittakhiru, tasaddaqu. Brothers and sisters in Islam, subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, fasalli li rabbika wanha. This is the best thing to do in the day of Eid. And this is the greatest deed that we do in the day of Eid. So inshallah, we need also when we go for the Eid, the Musalla al-Eid, we go from one way and then we come back from another way. This is Sunnah from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because this will spread the good and the Barakah. This also will show the power of Islam and Muslims. And this will spread the good, you greet more people in your way. And also this will make you support more people. And spread the smile and the greetings and dua. And also because the Malaika on the way from Eid and to Eid. So when you go to another road, inshallah, this will touch you with the barakah of the Malaika on the day of Eid. Inshallah, also we, we wear the best clothes that we have. The best, that's the Sunnah. And Friday you wear white, that's the Sunnah. And on the day of Eid, to wear the best clothes you have. And this is also Sunnah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this Eid a great Eid for all Muslim Ummah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he used to say, 
خطبنا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم this is في حديث البراء يوم النحر فقال إن أول ما نبدأ به في يومنا هذا أن نصلي ثم نرجع فننحر فمن فعل ذلك فقد أصاب سنتنا متفق عليه this حديث قريد أبو إن صحيح البخاري ومسلم that he said what we do in the day of Eid we do صلاة العيد and then we go and focus on our قرباني and spread the good and whoever does that he is actually uh, did and practiced the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is for us to be closer to Allah, it's to gain the piety, as it was explained in previous khutbah. It is to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is to revive the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the sunnah of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam and the story of Ibrahim and Ismail and, and uh, Hajar alayhi salam and also to share the barakah with our family and community and with the poor and needy. Brothers and, and sisters in Islam, please be generous and be kind. If you can do two qurbani, three, four, whatever you can, you can spread the khair uh, all over the world in the Muslim Ummah. Nowadays, you can do it online straight away. Within two minutes, you can just do it and donate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, this qurbani, Allah will give you the barakah and, and your family and increase your wealth. <coughs> Brothers and sisters in Islam, these days we need to remember those one in the Muslim Ummah who are suffering because the conflict, because the fitna, because the fight, because all of this. And we need to make dua for them. We need to make dua for them. Name them. It's a long list. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us these challenges in the Muslim Ummah, not for those one who are suffering only. And this is something we need to reflect. If a musibah happens somewhere in the world, let's uh, take an example, Kashmir has been for a long time. Palestine has been for a long time. Now recently we have Syria, we have Yemen, we have Iraq, and still Libya, and still people suffering, Rohingya very recent as well. So we have many places, you can name them, and too many and long list, but these problems that happened, it is actually not for those one who are suffering. It is not punishment for them. Inshallah, we hope that this is actually ibtila, tamhis, to gain the sabr and reward of the sabr, the patience, and the acceptance of the qadr. It's actually a test and a trial for them to, inshallah, cope with the problem and solve it according to Islam, and to unite together in solving it, but also it's a challenge for us. <laughs> Believe me, it is a challenge for us and it's more a challenge for us because we observe, we see, we are aware of it, we watch, we, we should feel, because we are all Muslims, we should feel the suffering, we should share with them the suffering and we should share with them the blessing that Allah gave us. If we are fortunate and we are wealthy and healthy and we can help and sponsor others, Many orphans, many widows, many, many people who are in need, we should share with them. There are, there are people in prison for over 40 years, 50 years. They enter 20 and then they, they leave 60 years old. Just imagine their children who didn't even see them for 40 years. And now they became 40 and they have even grandchildren. Think in that way. Think of the yatims, of prisoners and shaheeds. Think of the disabled and those who are permanently disabled uh, because of the war and conflict. They can't see, they don't have arms, they don't have legs, and they are unable to work, and they have families. Think about people who are suffering from cancer in the Muslim Ummah, and who are unable to provide for their families anymore. And share with them what Allah gave you. Be kind to them, Allah will be kind to you. Be merciful to them, Allah will be merciful to you. And that's the rules. And it's very important for us to do that because it's a challenge for us actually more. Because for those one who have the resources, how to get these resources out of their pockets and accounts, it is very important. Because they need courage, they need faith, they need commitment, they need submission to the will of Allah, they need to be grateful and thankful. And all these are great, the great principles of Islam. 
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us good Muslims and good examples of Muslims in these days and all days. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Aqulu ma tasma'una wa astaghfirullah wa lakum faya fawza al-mustaghfirin. Alhamdulillah, nahmaluhu wa nusalli wa nusallimu ala rasulihi wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika la wa ashadu anna muhammadan abdu wa rasulu wa ba'd I would like to end my khutbah with this and I want to make it as an introduction to this next khutbah If we see people as individuals who have issues like somebody for example made a sin or bad doing, or has shortcomings. And this person in trouble, a drinking alcohol, cigarettes, drugs, committing zina, haram relationship, a lady without hijab, a person who followed the fashion and not maybe wearing nice, a proper clothes according to Islam, his clothes tight or transparent, or not covering his aura, or a sister who is not wearing properly, or a makeup, or this or that, somebody taking mortgage or loan from the bank with interest with haram, somebody sunk with lots of loans and trouble financial problems because they're wrongdoing, somebody this, somebody that, we should not laugh at them. We should not laugh at them. We should not make it glittering against them. We should not feel happy that they are in trouble. We should not feel in any way ease because of that. We should not feel jealous when people are in good situation and feel happy when they are in bad condition. We should feel happy when people are good and we should feel bad when they are not well. And we should feel merciful shield them with our dua prayers our care and love because they are part of our muslim ummah we should try to help them advise them in private not in public not publicize their shortcomings online or offline or in the front of people and put shame on them or embarrass them or put their head down and make them cry and more sad we should lift them up and bring them and encourage them and be close to them because this is our weaknesses in the Muslim Ummah and we should really solve these things if we are all good and more good people then the, our problems in the Muslim Ummah will be solved if more trouble, more sins, more, more shortcomings, more wrong, wrongdoings then what happened? we will have more trouble, more trials, more tests in our life and more hardship we all will suffer so being merciful also, it has another element. How to care for each other. How to do service for each other. Bring people closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Soft da'wah work approach. It is the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and his sahaba. This can be explored later. But if we laugh at people because they are in trouble, we will face the same problem. I'm going to tell you and share with you this. Ibn Sirin, Ibn Sirin, rahmatullah Ali, he went to prison for a long time. And he said, by Allah, I know why I am in prison. Because 40 years ago, I told somebody, you are muflis, you are bankrupt, you are poor. And I'm getting it now. All the trouble that we have as Ibn Taymiyyah said is because of our sins. And this is this, this attitude that we have, or some of us have, we need to change it. Gusob, backbiting, happy because this person, his daughter in trouble, or his wife in trouble, or her husband in trouble. They're not good. This person get redundant, or he lost in his job, or he, he had trouble in his business. We should feel sorry for them. We should feel, we, we should feel merciful to them. Make dua for them. This is the true Muslim ummah, to be united in their hearts and in their mind and physically. 
and emotionally and socially and politically and also this is individual level in the higher level governments and countries and different race races and nationalities because these nationalities are just politically done by man-made passports and travel documents but actually we all belong to Adam and Eve we are all human and we all Muslims and we follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sunnah so we need also different countries if one Muslim country in trouble all Muslim countries they need to not to gloat, not to be happy because they are in trouble we should support them we should help them and examples are a lot and many and we need, we need to lift each other up and help each other up because that is the case of the Muslim Ummah as the Prophet وسلم, said it's like one body if one organ suffer all the organs will share the suffering and obviously they will lift each other and share the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us ambassadors of Islam and true examples of Muslims and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this day and these great days that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solve all our problems and all the Muslim Ummah problems and make us as individuals, great individuals in Muslim Ummah and as Ummah, a great Ummah among other Ummah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to solve all the problems of all the Muslim Ummah nations and countries we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to free all the Muslim Ummah from the occupations, from the zulm, the oppression and from all the suffering and hardship and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all our good deeds. Allahumma inna nas'aluka anta taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'u al-alim. Allahumma tub alayna innaka anta al-tawwab al-rahim. Allahumma aghfir lana innaka anta al-ghafur al-rahim. Allahumma taqabbalna fi hadhi al-ayyam al-tayyiba. Allahumma aj'alna fi al-salihin. Wa aktubna ma'a al-shahidin. Wa la tukhzina yawm al-deen. Bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.